Um, hi everyone, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Yadi and today I'm going to be talking to you about the placebo effect. So what is the placebo effect? It's essentially the psychological effect that occurs when you believe that you've been treated or cured of your illness when in fact you've been given um, a placebo or something that looks like a drug but actually contains no active ingredients which is usually, but not all the times, uh, all the time, un unbeknown to the person receiving the placebo. So what causes it? The short, simple answer is no one knows. But the two most promising reasons are expectations and classical conditioning. So expectations, that's essentially just um, about how when you take a pill, you expect it to work, so it just does. And no one really knows how that works either, but um, it could have something to do with the brain releasing endorphins when you take a pill or something like that. And classical conditioning, I'm sure you've heard of Pavlov's dog. So um, the scientists gave this dog food and it would salivate and then um, he would train the dog by ringing a bell every time he fed it. So after some time, the dog would salivate just by hearing the bell without the food actually being served too. So that's when we um, learn to associate a neutral stimulus, like ingesting a pill or just taking some syrup, for example, with the effect of feeling better or feeling less pain, for example. Um, so what about expectations when you give a placebo to something that can't hold expectations? So for example, animals. In one study, um, researchers were testing a treatment for canine epilepsy and found that dogs in the placebo group had fewer seizures than when they'd started the trial. Now obviously, a dog is not going to expect to have fewer seizures, but um, this could be explained by classical conditioning if they um, had received treatment for epilepsy before. But interestingly, research also shows that the expectations of owners and vets can even influence progress in their pets. Um, in humans, so a study explored the placebo effect by testing how people reacted to migraine pain medication. One group took a drug that was labelled with the drug's name, another group took a placebo that was literally labelled placebo, and a third group took nothing. And surprisingly, the group that took the placebo, and they knew it was a placebo, um, the placebo was shown to be 50% as effective as the real drug. So expectations might not have worked here because they wouldn't have expected it to work, but it did. So that could have also been due to classical conditioning. Um, in the book, Bad Science, it actually describes a patient being given sugar pills for a condition. And they were told by their doctor that the pills had absolutely no medicine in them, but they had worked before. So they could work for that patient, and it actually did end up working. So to end, I'd like to leave you with some mind-boggling examples of the placebo effect in action. So uh, here we have Henry Beecher, an American anaesthetist, um, who wrote about treating a World War so um, sorry, a soldier who fought in World War II um, and had suffered from horrific injuries. Now Henry Beecher had run out of morphine, which is a painkiller. So instead, he used salt water, and that patient <laughs> felt no pain at all. He was completely fine. My next example is this. So we have Dr. Stuart Wolf, who took two women who had um, nausea and vomiting and he administered to them a drug called Ipecac which is actually a vomit inducer and these two women didn't know that they were um, being given the vomit inducer and they actually reported um, fewer gastric contractions and you know their vomiting had reduced so that's quite shocking and then lastly there was a study done where 84 female room attendants were um, were tested on and they were split into two groups so one group was told that cleaning rooms was good exercise and that it satisfied the Surgeon General's recommendations for an active lifestyle while the other group was just let you know just left alone to do what they'd been doing all along and after four weeks they found that this group the group that had been given all this information they perceived themselves to be doing more exercise and they actually reported um, a significant decrease in body weight, body fat and BMI. And surprisingly, both groups were actually doing the same amount of exercise. So to end, I'd like to leave you with some food for thought and consider the ethics that surround the placebo effect. So when you're carrying out a drug trial, do you think it's ethical to give a patient um, something that they haven't consented to if they don't know exactly what they're getting? Or do you think it's ethical to give a patient suffering from a disease an inactive drug that you know probably won't work 
when there are other drugs available that could relieve more of their suffering. Thank you for listening.